The population of Spain is more than 47 million people, and the country's GDP is more than 1.3 billion US dollars. For comparison, the GDP of the US is 23 billion dollars, but there are 330 million people living in the United States, seven times more. And the area of Spain is eight times smaller than that of the US. All this means that Spain is much wealthier than the US. Hence, they have money for the development of their infrastructure. For example, Spain has the second longest high-speed railroad system in the world. China is in the first place. Even in the United States, there are five times less high-speed railroads than in Spain. It turns out that the Spanish have access to express transportation between all major cities, which are located around the capital and on the Mediterranean and Atlantic coastlines. But despite its development, 70% of Spain is empty. But why? This, this is Smart Stories Channel. We tell stories that make you think. We may notice that Spain is a large country. It's almost four times larger than England, but there are 9 million more people living in England than in Spain, and the population density is five times higher than in Spain, which is really strange. The thing is that there are vast empty spaces between the capital Madrid and the cities on the coastline which are connected with the railroad. It looks like a circle. As a result, we see two Spains. The first one is developed and populated. We all know the cities like Barcelona, Madrid or Valencia and the empty Spain, which is less developed and few people know about it. There is a huge difference between those two parts of Spain, and it can lead to serious problems for the whole country. The thing is that 90% of Spain's population, which is around 42 million people, live only on one-third of the whole area of the country. All these people are concentrated around large cities on the coast and Madrid and Zaragoza in the middle. This means that only 10% of Spanish, or around 5 million people, live on 70% of the area inside this empty space. The population density in that empty area is around 18 people per 1 square kilometer. It is almost equal to the population density of Norway, which is a very rare thing for Western Europe. However, inside this empty Spain, there are places which are less populated than others. One of such places is Serrania Celtiberica, which spreads across the territories of several inner provinces of Spain. This is quite a big part of Spain, equal to the area of the Republic of Ireland. But the population of Ireland is 5 million people, and in Serrania Celtiberica there are only 500,000 people. This means that the density in this region is around 8 people per 1 square kilometer. This makes Serrania Celtiberica the second most empty region in the whole EU. The only place in Europe with less people is the northern part of Scandinavia behind the Arctic Circle, Laplandia. The density here is from 2 to 5 people per square kilometer. Unbelievable, but that is not far less than in warm Spain. That is why many people call Serrania Celtiberica the Spanish Laplandia. One of the main reasons for so few people living here is the Iberian Highlands. These mountains go through almost the whole of Spain. The geography here is complicated, a lot of elevation changes, and very few habitable valleys are the natural explanations why almost nobody lives in Serrania Celtiberica. Just 100 kilometers from the Iberian Mountains, major cities are located, the likes of Madrid, Valencia, Zaragoza, and Bilbao. However, the Iberian Highlands are not the only mountains creating obstacles for the population. The Cantabrian Mountains are located in the northwest, the Pyrenean Highlands on the border with France, in the middle, the system of central mountains, and the Batic Mountains in the south. Well, Spain is indeed a very mountainous country. It is the second most mountainous in the EU just behind Austria, which is covered with the Alps. However, the mountains cannot be the main reason for such a low population density. There are far less flat areas in Switzerland and Austria, but the density there is higher. In fact, the problem is the country's recent past. In the last 50 years, the rural areas of Spain have lost 28% of their population. The one to blame here is Francisco Franco, who came to power in the 1930s. During his rule, a civil war erupted in Spain between the left-wing Republicans and the right-wing nationalists. The war lasted three years, from 1936 to 1939. It was very devastating. In three years, Spain lost around 3 million people. 
Eventually, Franco won the war and started a fascist dictatorship in the country. He sympathized with the Nazis in Germany and fascists in Italy, although officially he was neutral during the World War II. This allowed the regime to survive and keep functioning as an authoritarian police state during the next decades, until 1975. The era of Franco made an outcast out of Spain, which was isolated for a very long period of time. Spain was not a member of the UN until 1955 and was not a member of the European Economic Society, the EU predecessor. Independent political parties and labor unions were strictly prohibited. Franco tried to make the country self-sufficient. In reality, the economy stagnated. This caused a mass exodus of the population. Some escaped from the regime, the others migrated because of the total poverty. But the real depopulation of the rural area started in 1959 after Franco implemented his stabilization plan. He tried to reform the free trade and industry spheres. They did change the archaic and stagnating economy of Spain literally overnight. International investments were made in the country, industrial areas were built around the Basque country, northern coast, Barcelona and Madrid. They offered a lot of workspaces for millions of young Spanish living in villages. To realize the pace of the industrialization of Spain, we should take a look at 1946. There were only around 72,000 automobiles in the whole country. In 20 years, in 1966, there were more than a million cars. The Spanish economy grew with the pace of the Asian economic monsters like Japan. After Franco's death in 1975, the authoritarian regime ended. Many of those who had migrated from Spain returned and mostly inhabited the industrial areas, on the coast or in Madrid. In the last 30 years, starting from the 1990s, Spain has experienced the largest migration wave throughout its history. Today, every sixth citizen of Spain was born abroad, and many of them were born outside of Europe. They come mostly from the territories of former Spanish colonies in Latin America. These make Spain the fourth in Europe and the tenth in the world by population growth from the outside, and the majority of new citizens prefer to settle in the big cities with a lot of job opportunities, ignoring villages. If we sum up the 20th century from 1900 to 2000, the overall population of Spain has doubled. However, each fifth village ceased to exist. The population of Spain has not grown in recent years. From 2011 to 2021, the growth of population was only 0.12%. This is the lowest rate since any archival reports of the 1830s. The main reason for that is the low birth rate in Spain. Many experts blame the government for no supporting families. Out of the all Western European countries, Spain spends the lowest amount on supporting families, just half a percent of its GDP. This means that an average Spanish family needs to have 57 children to get an allowance equal to that of a family with three children in Luxembourg. All the above mentioned factors resulted in depopulation of the rural areas in the course of decades. For instance, the Teruel province, the larger part of which is situated in the Serrania Celtiberica. Take a look at the graph of the population development in Teruel. It seems like it was stable until 1960. It was the time when Franco implemented his economic reforms. Today, the population of Teruel is twice less than 100 years ago as tens of thousands of people moved out in the search of a better life. They left their village as it was often very difficult to survive there. Cold winters in the highlands, lack of basic facilities and undeveloped infrastructure. Even today, this region is suffering from a lack of investment. 40% of the Terrier population do not even have internet access. Also, they only have one slow train, which goes at a speed of only 30 km per hour. This train has turned into a meme in the Spanish social networks when a video showed that even a tractor is moving faster. Such regions strikingly differ from the developed parts of Spain like Madrid, which is considered a large technological center of the whole European continent with a highly developed railway where trains move 10 times faster than the Teruel train. The lack of investments make Teruel and similar regions less attractive for living and immigration. But it seems like Spain is content with this. So until the government decides to invest in the rural areas, 
90% of the Spanish will have to live only on one third of the territories they have at their disposal. If you like this video, hit the like button and subscribe to the channel. Here you will find many interesting videos. Thank you for watching and see you soon.